thank you and thank you very much for this uh, invitation uh, so i will speak um, about some problems which come from uh, arnold diffusion and the genericity properties of uh, arnold diffusion and essentially how to produce uh, invariant subsets compact invariant subsets in uh, the phase space of uh, uh, three degrees of freedom Hamiltonian, which are not uh, invar invariant tori or K, um, KM tori or uh, weak KM subsets and so on. Th they will be um, invariant cylinders uh, diffeomorphic to T2, T square to the interval, closed interval. So submanifold with boundary. And let me begin uh, with an example. Uh, so on the I will denote by A3 or AN the uh, cotangent bundle of T3. Theta and R are the canonical coordinates on it. And uh, we'll consider a Hamiltonian system, which is close to angle action uh, system, H of R plus epsilon f of theta and r and everything is uh, very regular as regular as we need and in such a system i will consider a point which is a double resonant point whatever it is uh, if you normalize this system using uh, symplectic diffeomorphisms you will get a simpler form which is like this in fact, it's a simplified normal form. So it reads like this, omega r hat over square root of epsilon plus c of theta bar r bar plus r naught of theta bar r plus r of theta and r. So what are these notations? First, uh, this is a double resonant point. So you have one uh, series of fast variables which are one dimensional both. So on the two dimensional analysis and theta bar r bar are the slow variables in a square now um, of course this will be a singular problem because the uh, linear part goes to infinity when epsilon goes to zero so we have some problems but we will have to deal with this what is c c is a classical system on uh, a2 so C of theta bar R bar is a, a positive definite quadratic form plus a potential. And the uh, R naught and R are remainders uh, for which we only need an information on the size. R naught is in C. Uh, let me fix some p larger than 2 but uh, as large as I want the norm in cp of r0 is smaller than square root of epsilon and the norm in cp of r is less than epsilon to some power l which I can choose as large as I want provided that the regularity is large enough so L is very, very large. So the contribution of this part of the remainder is very small. And the main point is that for this part of the remainder, which is quite big, uh, it depends only on theta bar. So we will get some integrability. If I remove this term, the system does not depend on the first variable theta hat. So r hat is a first integral. 
and this will be crucial. Question. Yeah? So you were saying that this is simplified because... This uh, simplified is just because... Classical uh, is not... Uh, there is no part of... Uh, y yes, exactly. You, you have... No? Yeah. You have here a complementary part of the Hessian of the integrable H. So I, I neglect it, but it's not really important. Uh, and what, uh, what is the purpose? Uh, what is an analyst? I, I will focus on the system C. So in C, you can find under generic conditions there are families of periodic orbits uh, for uh, C, which are one parameter families with parameter the energy. Each, so it's for C, uh, periodic orbits. And uh, each gamma E is hyperbolic in its level. So this makes sense. You have a, a three-dimensional manifold here. Uh, the phase space is four-dimensional manifold, the hyperbolic periodic orbit, and the stable and unstable manifold are Lagrangian uh, in, uh, the, the, uh, in uh, the analysis A2. So two-dimensional both. And if you look at the union of these orbits, This is uh, an analyst. It's diffeomorphic to T times 0, 1. I take a compact analyst because it's what interests me. And um, this is classically symplectic and normally hyperbolic in a very natural sense. The stable and unstable manifolds of A are the union of those of the gamma E, and the stable and unstable foliation, you get it very easily. So this is, uh, the start starting point is this. This is not difficult to prove. And the problem is how to keep track of this analysis in the system generated by n epsilon. How to do this? So you have to couple with this term and then take the remainders into account. And the result, which I will state very uh, briefly, not very precisely, uh, is the following. There, if the regularity is large enough, I didn't uh, uh, compute, but I think 10 is, is OK, but I'm not sure. Um, for uh, There exists an ep epsilon 0 positive such that uh, for 0 less than epsilon 0, there is a compact, normally hyperbolic, invariant cylinder C epsilon in the zero level of N, which is naturally attached to A. I will not precise, make this precise, but which is naturally related to, to A, the construction will be clear for, for showing this. But this is a little bit more complicated because this cylinder is three-dimensional. And in this case, uh, it's diffeomorphic to t squared to the closed interval. And in this case, it's a little bit more difficult to define the notion of 
uh, nor normal hyperbolicity. So I will begin with this. So C epsilon. Uh, and I have to uh, make precise the geometry and, and so on. So I will begin with normal hyperbolicity. in the symplectic setting, then application, uh, essentially how to apply KIM theorem in this setting, because we will have to apply KIM theorem at some place. And this need to be very careful on the regularity and uh, the everything. And then if I have time enough, homoclinics, homoclinic properties. And what, what I would like to do is uh, to use very basic facts in normally hyperbolic theory and to take advantage of the features of the symplectic system to simplify everything. And this is possible in a certain uh, amount. So let me first recall uh, usual definitions for normal hyperbolicity. So usually you consider a manifold, a C1 diffeomorphism, uh, you put a Riemannian metric on M, you consider a compact invariant manifold for F. And you say that N is normally hyperbolic if <coughs> two things. There is a decomposition of the tangent bundle along N in three submundles, one and stable one plus Tn plus E minus and stable, which are DF invariant. And a uh, 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 domination condition, which is that the norm of DF restricted to E plus. E plus is uh, stable and E minus is as unstable for me, is smaller than uh, the co norm of df restricted to tn, smaller or equal to 1, smaller or equal to the norm of df on tn, and smaller than uh, the co-norm of df on e minus. Uh, and you agree also you can uh, take this at the power k to have a k hyperbolicity notion. Uh, in terms of spectra, if I put on a line the module of the eigenvalues in a s trivial situation when you can define this, you have the stable spectrum, the um, central spectrum, the unstable one and the stable one. Now this is the general situation. In the symplectic context, this is slightly dif different okay. because we need a symmetric situation. Uh, if so n is now symplectic and f uh, symplectic diffeomorphism, then uh, we usually, it's not necessary, but wha what is convenient is to use uh, symmetric conditions. The dimension of E plus is equal to the dimension of E minus. And uh, the norms and co-norms are 
are symmetric with respect to one. So this is exactly symmetric. This one is one over this one, and, and so on. Uh, and this yields uh, simpler formulations. And there is one which I use in the course of the, the uh, studies of, uh, on Arnold diffusion, uh, which is the following one, which is for vector fields. First, I, I will give a version of normal hyperbolicity for non-compact manifolds in Rn and for vector, vector fields, so which, which is really very basic and which is the only one which I use. And this is due, for instance, to Patrick Bernard, but uh, also um, you, you can find it uh, in many places. So uh, the space is Rn plus n plus plus n minus. You consider on Rn uh, this space a vector field, which is the sum of an unperturbed part, V0, and a perturbation. V0 is like this. I, I uh, write x for the variable in Rn. x dot is x of x us. u dot is lambda u of x u and s dot is minus lambda s x s. This is the unperturbed part. Clearly, this gives you Rm times 0, 0 as an invariant manifold, which is normally hyperbolic in the usual sense. And then you perturb it, and what you get is the following result fix a positive r and denote by br the set of x u s with norm of u s smaller than r. So the result is there is a delta positive such that if uh, D, the partial derivative of x with respect to the variable x in C0 is smaller than delta, and the C1 norm of x over the whole space is smaller than delta, then first the maximal invariant set in BR is a graph of the same dimension of, uh, as Rn, is of the form n equal to x, uh, u is u of x, s is s of x, with x in Rn, u and s are c1, and you have conditions on the signs. There is a constant which depends only on V0, such that uh, the norm C0 of UNS is smaller than this constant, which depends on V0, norm of P C0. First reason. So this we need in uh, for our null diffusion to uh, prove that uh, some manifolds coincide, which come from different normal forms. This unicity, uniqueness in some ball is very important. Second result: the maximal positively 
invariant subset uh, in uh, BR is also a graph. It's W plus of M lock and it's X um, U, yes, U is equal of U of X and S, S with X in RM and S in minus R R. We, where u plus is not the same, u plus is c1, and same result for negatively invariant subset. Lock. Okay? Ah, yes, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I forgot something which is very important. Y you, you need some uniformity, of course, because it's non-compact. So lambda u, lambda s are larger than some lambda, which is positive everywhere. This condition of about the vector select in the central manifold? Yeah. So the vector is actually bounded, actually is more, or? This one? Yeah. This ensures that the um, norm and the co-norm are dominated by the lambda. Essentially, you assume that delta is smaller than lambda. So it's not that small enough. Yeah. It's not that small enough or something. No, 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 no. You, there is a delta. And that's, uh, that's all we need. I, I ah. try to give the simplest possible s uh, statement. And the perturbation has the same delta? Yes, because you can choose both. But they, they are not related, in fact. But if you put, I, I could put, no, 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 of course, of course, of course. okay, I could put no, this. No, 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 no. But there is okay. one delta which, which is good for both. Okay? Is a theorem for a general vector set not necessarily simple? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I could make, I, if, you, if you wish, you could make, make this precise using this uh, setting. Of course, because if you integrate, this is the differential of x on the manifold. If you integrate it, you will have the differential of the flow, and you will get the norm and the co-norm using the this. It's a simple integration. You wrote exactly the same thing in another way in the symplectic yeah, setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I should, I, I, I can. Uh, <laughs> uh, tell me wh what is the first one. <laughs> and maybe other ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But everything is, is written in, in your papers also. Maybe in the symplectic situation, I, I don't really know. Well, uh, this part is not uh -huh. Anyway, uh, let's have a talk. Well, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's actually a lot easier than that. And it's very, uh, but maybe in the symplectic case, I will uh, be. you only need to have assumption of uh, one part of the spectrum because in principle you have to Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. This comes from uh, the symmetry, you, you, you have to take care of the symmetries, in, in fact. If the dimensions, no, stable and unstable, are the same. No, it's not automatic. No, I, I, no, if no, the no, stable no, and unstable no, are not, no. No, 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 no. You need them to have the same dimension. We have ca easy ca counter examples. No, but you think it's separated? No, no, no. No, no, no. You, you, you need the dimension, really need. Okay, so other I will I will add some words on the symplectic case. So third result W plus minus log of N are foliated 
by the stable and unstable manifolds of the of n, which are C1. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if, if there are questions. OK. And uh, OK. Uh, the uh, dilatation contra contraction rates are like this. over this I mean the, the rate of uh, uh, convergence to X when you are on the stable leave uh, and then uh, if delta is small enough if P delta is smaller than lambda and if all functions are CP, then N, so U S U plus S minus, okay, are CP. Is it okay? Or yeah. Uh, so if the spectral gap is large enough, then you get regularity. And the last point, which is very useful, if v zero is is v is uh, L periodic, where L is a lattice in R M then everything pass to the quotient to L. And the main application of this, so this is the end of the first uh, theorem, main uh, occurrence of this, is when m is equal to 2d, l is equal to z to the d, and so you get r2d over z d as uh, the, the, the manifold m is diffeomorphic to r to the 2d to z to the d, which is also a d so this way you will get normally hyperbolic analyte of any dimension if the initial vector field is z d periodic so first application and second application how to define with this very simply uh, the notion of a uh, normally hyperbolic manifold with boundary in a very simple way. Uh, just uh, assume that So you have a manifold and a vector field, a diffeomorphism, uh, uh, no, a vector field, an N which is invariant, compact, 
you will say that it is normally hyperbolic, so submanifold with boundary. Uh, you say that it is normally hyperbolic when there is a neighborhood O of N in M, a neighborhood O, an open set in R, uh, M plus and uh, plus plus and minus a diffeomorphism phi it depends the regularity depends on the problem uh, from O to O such that the pullback of the uh, so phi is from M to R M plus M plus plus and minus, the, uh, there is a system like this, like V here, uh, such that the pullback of V is V, and M is sent by phi into the manifold N here. If you assume this, you can define the local invariant manifolds of n by taking the pre-image by phi from those of n, and this does not depend on phi by the compactness of n. So this way you can define whatever you want. It's a trivial situation, but it's all what we need in Arnold diffusion. So I limit myself to, to this. Now, uh, we can do symplectic things. There are two results. First result, theorem. Uh, assume now that um, uh, m is equal to 2d, n plus n, n equals to n minus equal to n. So you start on our 2d plus 2n, you take the usual symplectic form on it. It's not necessarily constant in the theorem, but I will assume it for, for today. Um, you fix a Hamiltonian, C2, uh, which is the sum of H0 and F, and I apply the previous result to the vector field generated by H, which is the sum of the one generated by H0, and this is V0, this is V, and this is P. Okay? I, I apply the previous theorem to this situation. So, with the same assumptions, you will get normally hyperbolic manifolds, but you have more. First, of, uh, delta small f and the same assumptions on v zero and uh, on v and p, v zero and p. Yes, the same form of, uh, as the previous one. Uh, you will have that N with the same notation is symplectic, that W plus minus of N are co-isotropic, which means that uh, at each point, the symplectic orthogonal of the tangent space is contained in the space. Uh, the stable leaves are isotropic, OK? 
okay? This is not difficult. But the very interesting thing is the characteristic foliation foliations of W plus minus of N. The characteristic foliations are the foliation whose leaves are everywhere tangent to the orthogonal of the tangent spaces in W plus minus of N. This is a coisotropic manifold. You have a distribution of, of it, and there is a general result which tells you that it is integrable. And these, uh, the leaves, are precisely uh, the leaves of the characteristic foliations are the manifolds W plus minus of X, X in N. And this is really nice because in this case, if you know that the stable and unstable global manifolds are CP, then you lose only one degree of differentiability for the transverse foliation. So in particular, no, no. Integrability is so always the case for a coisotropic co co manifold. The characteristic for uh, distribution is always integrable, and in this case, the leaves are precisely the so stable. What, are the, what, are the what is the characteristic foliation? The, you have when you have a coisotropic manifold. Right. T take a, a hypersurface, for instance. Yeah. You have the on each tangent uh, space, you can consider the symplectic orthogonal, ah, yes, and coisotropic means that the symplectic orthogonal is contained in the tangent space. So this way, you get the distribution, and distribution, distribution whatever the, di the dimension, is always integrable. And in this case, if W plus minus of N are CP for regularity reasons. You don't have to use the usual machinery of regularity of stable and unstable leaves. You can apply symplectic geometry and you get that the dependence of W plus minus of X with respect to X is CP minus 1. The easiest way to see this is you look at a coisotropic uh, hypersurface. These characteristic foliations are exactly the flow lines of the Hamiltonian vector field. And the Hamiltonian vector uh, function is a function whose level coincides with the manifold. So you lose only one degree of regularity. And this is true for any dimension taking independent families. OK. Uh, this is the second result. And the last one, which is the most useful, is the following one. Now this is joined with Laurent Lazzarini. Um, it's a straightening result. Uh, which tells you the following. Assume that you have a symplectic, it's a symplectic theorem, symplectic manifold. Uh, a normally hyperbolic compact uh, invariant manifold of course, here I take a Hamiltonian regular enough, say C, P. So I take a normally hyperbolic compact invariant manifold, but which is a little bit more of this, which is the image of an embedding of T, D times B, D uh, into N. 
And this is a symplectic embedding. So your A oh, of image, of course, your A is the image of a, an annulus, a compact annulus in R2D. OK, then, and assume this is CP. Then there is an extension G, J, from an open neighborhood of TD times uh, BD to an open neighborhood of A, G symplectic, which straightens the leaves of the manifold A. So the manifolds uh, A, of course, but this is done already by, by uh, small j, w plus minus of A and w plus minus of x, x in A. In the most natural sense, you have here something like this with, say, Something like this, stable, unstable, it's not a proper so, uh, drawing, but what does, yeah? It's a, a, an open neighbor, oh, sorry. Thank you. You need uh, to take the product with uh, the um, normal direction, thank you, times R to N. You, you straighten to you you extend to to be able to straighten the stable and unstable manifold. You need more dimension, so this distorted situation becomes completely straight, like this. So this means exactly this. It's easy to translate. You send uh, everything. Which uh, uh, sub, which are the sub bundles of um, are the, the phase space onto the distorted annulus. For this, we need the manifold to be an annulus, or at least to have a trivial normal bundle. Maybe it's possible in, in other cases, but and uh, we don't need this. Let me give a first application. And the main application, the only one we need, is the, what we call a geometric normal forms. That is normal forms we, which come only from geometry, not on the action of sequences of diffeomorphisms. A is uh, uh, the image of a CP embedding of a compact annulus. And the, the main, the first application is take the first annulus A, the union of gamma E, E in E0, E1, for the classical system on the four dimensional annulus. Consider this one, okay? This is a two-dimensional analysis. And what is it? It's the union of periodic orbits. So 
the flow on it is completely integrable. So you can use uv larnod theorem and find symplectic angle action coordinates. So let me call uh, phi rho symplectic angle action coordinates. You know that they exist. This gives you the first embedding j, small j. j from t times 0, 1, maybe not 0, 1, uh, alpha, beta. You cannot change the length to a. Now you can extend this j, and this will provide you with symplectic coordinates if I call phi rho u s the coordinates in t times alpha beta times 2 for short uh, this straightens the w plus minus of a and w plus minus of x. But what does it mean? You can, in these new coordinates, compute a Taylor expansion for c. And it's very easy to check that in these coordinates, C was the Hamiltonian. I, I'm sorry. C was the classical system here. Yeah. So in these coordinates, you get phi rho u s. I will not have room enough uh, here. C of phi rho u s is C zero of rho plus lambda of phi and rho times u s plus C three of phi rho u s. These terms means that it's of order three in u and s, and there is no other term. And you do this only. Uh, by saying that the leaves are straightened. And that's all. Okay, now this is all we need to produce our cylinders. Uh, but maybe it will be a little bit. The, the there is no. Uh, yeah? Is also a of the to uh, no, no, no. You, you, you can have u3, u2 u to the 3, or u2s. So Yes, in, in this, you, the, the factor is, okay? Uh, okay, so, application. So, let us go back to the first no normal form. So, it was omega r hat over square root of epsilon plus, now I know, of course, I will use, instead of theta and r, this new coordinate system. So uh, in you have phi rho u s, and you still have theta hat r hat. This is a symplectic coordinate system. And the system will uh, read c0 of rho plus lambda of phi rho u s plus c3 of phi rho u s plus the remainders and for the first step and uh, r hat i will take only the first part of the remainder what can you do with this so i will be short because there is no time enough but What is the advantage of this normal form? If you look at this first, you will look at the universal cover, r to the 6, because 
I want to do something which Abed doesn't like at all, but I will do this, which is the symplectic transformation. Theta hat uh, is changed, I don't know, r hat is changed uh, into r square root of epsilon r tilde, and this one is 1 over square root of epsilon theta tilde. This is symplectic, there is no doubt, and it transforms the Hamiltonian, so it's uh, an epsilon zero. I don't put the, the remainder. You just forget about this square root of epsilon. Of course, you will recover it at some place, but at least you can forget about it uh, from the beginning. So it looks like this, plus r zero of phi rho u s r tilde now. But what is really nice is that the change is in this sense, r hat is square root of r tilde. So the norm of r naught doesn't change. It's even better. So this is still smaller than uh, square root of epsilon in Cp. So now, how to apply the uh, normally hyperbolic result? Uh, you write the equations. So they read like this. Uh, theta tilde dot equal, uh, r tilde dot equal, uh, phi dot equal, rho dot equals, u dot equal, s dot equal. OK, you will get something. But now you do w exactly what you do when you look at a fixed point in the plane. And when you don't want to normalize, you just make a change like this. Square root of epsilon u bar, s bar is square root of epsilon s bar. This is not symplectic, but you can do this. And the last equation doesn't change for the first term. You will still get here it's lambda of phi rho u bar and lambda of phi rho s bar. And then you have to divide by uh, something or multiply by something, sorry. Uh, but this works and this doesn't change the uh, form of the remainders. If you do this, you have to write this properly. But uh, there is a minus. Is the is the remainder uh, the, any remainder. If you look at this one, so uh, this, there is no UNS, so OK. This is already done. Let us look at this one. C of phi phi rho u s. This becomes C of phi rho square root of u bar square root of s bar. So it's even better as an estimate. I, it's of order epsilon in Cp, uh, C3. OK? And you do this with uh, all the, the variables. And what you get is the existence of So you, you, you have many uh, things to do. You have to use bump, bump functions to extend this normal form, which is defined on, on a, a compact subset of R to 6 to R6. Uh, and uh, There are many details, but the idea is like this. You get uh, an invariant normally hyperbolic. symplectic submanifold I'm on the universal cover so of R to the 6 which is diffeomorphic to an analysis A square so for the normal form here with this 
the whole normal form if you yeah, do this wi without the, the, the last term. And what you can say is square root of epsilon close to the unperturbed one in CP. Or maybe C uh, uh, I forgot to say that you, you lose G is CP minus 3 here, so you lose some regularity. But OK. CP minus 3. OK, now you have this. And the main point, which makes everything work, is that uh, this is, uh, let me call, of course, you have still an invariance and uh, the action of the lattice uh, theta tilde theta tilde plus square root of epsilon, I divide in by square root of epsilon, and phi, phi plus 1. This uh, leaves the system invariant. And the uh, other, uh, yes? No, no, you have this. Sorry? Yeah, the, wh when I do all these changes, I get this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, it's invariant on, on the, by the, the lattice. So what you, you get is this annulus, and that's why I say that's an annulus. And um, this annulus is, uh, let me write, write A epsilon for this. It's a symplectic annulus. So the flow on it is generated by the restriction Restriction and epsilon restricted to a epsilon because it's symplectic. Now a epsilon is two uh, four dimensional, two degree of freedom. You have one first integral, which is an epsilon. And since the system does not depend on theta tilde, you have another one, which is r tilde. And both are pairwise independent. So on this analysis, you get a completely integrable system. And so you are uh, again in the situation of the beginning. You have an analysis on which you have angle action coordinates by Liouville theorem, Liouville Arnold theorem. So Liouville Arnold. Does it not have any consideration? No. Uh, uh, I mean, it's a singular uh, <laughs> perturbation problem. So you have uh, vanishing torsion of uh, vanishing, uh, I mean, an epsilon is isoenergetically non-degenerate on its levels. And the non-degeneracy ten tends to zero when epsilon goes to zero. And we have to take this into account. But we did. But first, you will, uh, Arnold, this, at this level, you have no non-degeneracy, gives a symplectic system. Uh, I and Psi. Sure. Yeah. 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 It's symplectic. You want to understand the flow on it, on, the, the on this analysis. Since okay. it's symplectic, the flow is generated by the restriction of the Hamiltonian to it. I look at this Hamiltonian. It has two first integrals. So the system is, yeah, and you, you uh, they are independent. But they are independent. 
No, no, you, you restrict to the annulus. So this is four dimensional. Two degree of freedom okay. system, you have two first integrals, so it's completely integrable. The, the first integral is the, uh, the energy and the R tilde, because I don't take, at this moment, I didn't take the last term into account. So this is, it's the main point, in fact. So you get this symplectic coordinate system. Okay? No, uh, almost. Almost, because... Yeah, but you, you need to add the remainder. You, you have the last term. So you have this analysis, which gives you new coordinates, psi and i. This is on A2. And you still have to use now, so you have this analysis, now it's four-dimensional, but you need, in order to understand everything, to have a symplectic coordinate system in a neighborhood. And for this, you uh, to, to uh, prove the existence of a normally hyperbolic manifold and take the last term into account. So you used the extension and straightening theorem. This will give you psi i u s in a neighborhood of this analysis. Okay? And now in these coordinates, you write the full Hamiltonian. But here, uh, phi, of course, you have a, a component which is close to theta tilde, so you have divided by square root of epsilon. Uh, so you have some operation like this. And it will give you a new Hamiltonian, m epsilon, which is m0 plus lambda of psi i u s plus m epsilon 3. And this begins to u s at order 3. Why can, uh, yes, okay, this is the form, and plus R of everyone. Okay, this is just the extension, and you have to add the last term. But now, this one is very small. As small as you want. In fact, you lose one, one degree because you have divided by the square root of epsilon in the process. So you get this. It doesn't have the, the log in. It doesn't use the PCR norm because of the scaling you use that. Yes, you, you lose a little bit here. But that's all. That's the only place where you lose something. And now you go back to the same idea. You make a truncation in the variables u and s, but you limit yourself to u s smaller than epsilon to the l minus 1. So you can have a small box. You do exactly the same as we did previously. You localize it in a very small box, and you get a new and last uh, normally hyperbolic manifold, which is epsilon to the a minus 1 close to the first one in Cp. And P you can choose. But the first one uh, were completely integrable. So in the new one, what you get is a perturbation of a completely integrable system of two degree of freedom of size epsilon L minus 1, you can choose L, in Cp, and you can choose P. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You lose something, and, and P also. But uh, no, no, here, here it's okay. Okay, 
But uh, you, you can choose everything. So you can apply KM theorem. If everything is large enough, so uh, maybe I will stop here. You can apply KM theorem. But you have to take care of the non-degeneracy uh, of the degeneracy when epsilon goes to zero because you have done this uh, rescaling which uh, makes the torsion vanish at some when epsilon goes to zero. And for this we use the existence of sections and Hermann invariant of theorem. We uh, go, this is still with Laurent Mazarini. And we have a version of this, which is almost like yours, um, which give us the existence of invariant tori, which are two dimensional. Yes, you. <laughs> so <laughs> we have, just to summarize, and I will stop here, you have a four dimensional manifold. A epsilon. You take the intersection with a zero energy level, for instance, zero. This gives you a cylinder, which is not necessarily uh, in R6, it's invariant, but if you want to truncate it, it's not. This is a cylinder, diffeomorphic to T2 times R. And inside this cylinder, you can prove the existence of invariant tori, which are two dimensional. And Lagrangian inside A epsilon. Take the part which is between two tori, this is a cylinder. And this cylinder is naturally associated to the initial annulus A. And you can, de in fact, describe the geometry of this cylinder in terms, in terms of vibration over the first angles. So thank, thank you very much. I will stop here. <laughs> <laughs>